Falls. She's been acting strange lately. Also pulling a disappearing act with Steve. Six o'clock came and went. I wondered if maybe they were having a surprise party for me, and this was all some kind of trick. But by 7.30, I was sitting on my couch crying. My mortgage is overdue, and I may lose my house. That's... My electric is going to be shut off in two days. Okay. I can't find a new job after being unfairly let go from my last one. That's what everybody says. And now my boyfriend and my best friend don't give a crap about my birthday. Motherfucker, Great. you got bigger fish to fry. I decided to go to the casino and gamble by myself. Really? I'd That's never what you're doing? There, but I had Bitch, ten bucks and a dream. This stupid ass story is already pissing me the fuck off. off. I went. Bitching entering, about nothing. The security guy Why you got real life shit to worry about? I told him I'd never been there. The fuck is your problem? The direction I needed to go in order to get set up. A nice lady up gave me a casino card to insert into the slot machines and explained everything. She even gave me $5 on my card for a birthday gift. There were hundreds of slot machines to choose from. I saw one that said Lucky Sevens, and I felt like it was calling my name. Boy, they were trying to, to set up that she had shit going on that, that wasn't good. And said, Hi, Sarah. Because, I mean, she's about to gamble, and we're going to win something great. I wagered a dollar spin, knowing but they that I only had five it. spins. Like, no but one's I feeling still had my ten you at this point. I hit the button, and I won nothing. I hit it again, and nothing. I suddenly felt the pressure of the bills, the house, my missing boyfriend, and my life weighing on my shoulders. The little corner screen popped up again. This time it read, Happy birthday, Sarah. I have a gift for you. Take a spin. The contest was over, so I went and saw Calypso. I asked him to make good on his promise, to bring an end to all the pain, to take away my curse. He offered me a vial. He said inside it held the blood of the man who'd cursed me on the night of my execution. He told me if I drank it, my curse would be over. But he also said if I ever returned to my killing ways, the antidote would wear off, and the curse would come back to haunt me. I had to decide. The in-game character model looks terrible. It took me all of ten seconds. Let's face it, boys and girls. A man has to have his priorities. I killed Calypso about as well as I ever killed anyone. Now that I'm free, I'm going to be the greatest of all time. It was a fat clown. I felt like that was weird. How did it know it was my birthday? Then I figured all of my information is on my card, so it's probably programmed to say that. I took a spin. Suddenly, right. I see sevens, and I hear bells, and see lights. Oh my god, it had a gift for me, alright. I had just won $2,000. I felt tears welling up. That would cover my electric bill, phone, gas, and water, with money left over for groceries. I was so happy. A nice man came over. He had me sign my name on a form and handed me the $2,000. Best birthday ever. I pulled out a cigarette and puffed. I tried to call Steve again. No answer. I tried Angie again. No answer. I smoked my new port and celebrated by myself. You're a black girl. I realized I still had my $10. I immediately just, went just, back just over to Lucky Sevens and put my ten bucks. White in. people may smoke I put my forks, card in, rubbed the machine, and said, "Thank you, baby." But it's stereotypically the little screen that. popped up and said, "You're welcome, baby." I sat back and stared in disbelief. I immediately got up and yelled for the nice man. Hey, sir, does um, is there somebody listening and controlling these machines that talks to you? He looked at me like I was drunk. Maybe. What do you mean, ma'am? I was stuttering at this point. I, I mean, like, I, I said thank you, and the screen said, you're welcome, look. I showed it to really him. It said, 
Hi, Sarah. Welcome to Sunlight Casino. You have ten dollars. I felt like a total idiot. He laughed and mumbled and walked away. I didn't know what to think. I knew for a fact that it said, you're welcome, baby. I thought maybe the stress was getting to me. I summoned the cute cocktail waitress and grabbed a glass of wine. I hit the button to spin. Nothing. Two more times, and nothing. The little box popped up again. It read, what are you going to do about your mortgage? I can help you. I looked around. I felt like Angie and Steve were hiding somewhere, doing this to me. And there was like a hidden camera, and this was all just a big birthday joke. I tried to hide my fear. I ignored the little screen and kept spinning. It popped up again. You know that Angie and Steve are together right now, right? They are betraying you. That's it. I pulled my card out, cashed out my few dollars I had left, and headed towards the door. I wondered if maybe I'd been drugged somehow. I got in my car, and I sat there. I thought about everything that had just happened. I felt crazy. I wondered if this was just my subconscious trying to tell me something. What if the machine was right? Were Angie and Steve together? No, no, they wouldn't do that to me. They had been acting strange lately. Would the machine really give me three grand for my mortgage? I shook my head. I sat in my car for what felt like an eternity. I don't know why, but I went back in. I took a deep breath and sat down in front of Lucky Sevens again. I looked around to make sure no one was watching me. I put my card in, then my money. I still had my two grand stashed in my purse, so I figured what the heck. Sure enough, the screen popped up. Hi Sarah, I've got what you need if you do what I say. I calmly and quietly what said, what do you mean? Huh. Nothing happened, no response. I hit the button and began to play. Three spins in, the screen popped back up. Mortgage for murder. Kill two birds with one stone. My heart was beating in my chest. Somehow, I knew exactly what this machine meant. I felt like I was connected to it. It had me under a spell. I said no. I kept spinning. Lucky Sevens replied, I'll give you half now. You do the job, and I'll give you the other half. They deserve to die. Angie and Steve well, oh, together. Oh, because it was Kill mine. I suppose? If you don't complete the job, I don't know what that was you about. will die within 48 hours. Or did I just have no help? I guess. I wouldn't have enough. Just then, bells and lights. I had hit again. $1,500. Half my mortgage. Today is August 8th. And I'm sitting outside of Angie's apartment. Steve's car is in the driveway. My heart is beating, and I'm crying. Hey guys, thank you so much for listening. Um, this I'll is be real with you, bro. That was terrible. Author that might be writing for the channel. Um, Don't let him do that. From this well, then again, on. maybe it's you. Um, she actually submitted several I mean, stories to me. I mean, it'd be an ass. I really want to know what you guys saying. think. Uh, give me some feedback. It is what it is. You're, you're not very good. You're just reading things off of the paper, and it's never really necessarily good. But then you say the words, and they don't necessarily have any punch. But that's okay, because that's how you read them. That, that's actually not March 31st, 2017. 9.46. Today marks the commencement of the human trials for drug E73-2PAQ72. Six test subjects will be observed, all of which agreed under the assumption that they would be testing new asthma medication. Damn it. There are three females and three male participants. One eight-year-old child, 20-year-old adult, and 70-year-old elderly participant from oh, both groups. It. Testing will begin in 14 minutes time. 10. The female and male child have been administered the medication in the form of an inhaler so as not to arouse any suspicion. The medication will be administered to the adult participants in the very same way. The female child showed no effects in the first 13 minutes of the trial and continued to play contentedly. Damn it. The male child withdrew himself and sat on the floor with his knees pulled into his chest and remained unresponsive to any outside stimulation. He rarely blinked and his breathing was rapid. 
He broke out into a cold sweat about 15 minutes into the test. At the 15 minute mark, the female began to laugh hysterically and proceeded to swallow sticks of chalk whole. She was restrained by the team and choked on her tongue. Her body was taken away for post-mortem examinations. The male participant was neutralized after his symptoms failed to worsen or improve after three hours and he fell into a state of physical paralysis. His body was also a takeaway for post-mortem examinations. Tomorrow the adult participants will be administered the drug and their reactions will be observed. April 1st, 2017 931. Today is the second day of human trials for drug E73 2 PAQ72. Due to the male child's unresponsiveness to the drug yesterday, the dosage will be increased by 25% for the male adult participation, as we suspect that males may show more controlled reactions to the drug. The drug dose will also increase by 25% for the adult female participant in order to see if the females still exhibit psychotic episodes, but in a shorter amount of time with more of the drug. Tests will begin in 20 minutes time. The drugs were administered with the updated doses as they were in the previous test through an inhaler. The patients were not panicked or suspicious of the drug. The female and male participants immediately started behaving strangely. The female participant began telling stories about her life during World War II despite it having occurred long sure. before her time within three minutes of having received the drug. The male participant began reciting Bible verses within 90 seconds of receiving the drug, and by the five minute mark he was screaming uncontrollably about the voices in his head. Remarkably, the female participant was screaming about the exact same things as the male participant at the exact same time, despite the participants being in two different rooms which were both soundproofed. By 30 minutes into the test, the female had fallen silent and the male had begun to almost hum an inaudibly low note. Within three minutes of the male participant making this noise, the female began to beg us to make the bees get out of her ears, which we assume was the male's humming noise she heard. She began to claw violently at her ears, leaving her face bloodied. She was restrained, which seemed to make her angry, as she began to scream profanities and declare a plague on humanity. She began to seize and was sedated temporarily 40 minutes into the experiment. When she came to 10 minutes later, she begged for death. She described horrible scenes of hellfire and a rapture which would eradicate all evil on the planet that she had seen in her dream. She had seemed to become subdued not long after her claims and was subsequently freed from her restraints. She immediately began to claw at her throat and eyes and managed to remove one of her eyes before our team could get to her. Jesus Christ. Yeah. We decided to neutralize her as we were about to administer a lethal dose of redacted when the male participant started to growl from his observation room and threatened to unleash the devil on us if we killed her. We neutralized the female participant and continued to observe the male subject. He calmed down for a while and began a conversation with an unseen figure. He was laughing and engaging in light conversation <laughs> with the wall beside him. 110 minutes into the test, his face dropped mid-conversation, and he proceeded to put his hands on his face and snap his own neck. His body was taken away for post-mortem examination. Tomorrow, the elderly participants will be administered the drug, and their reactions will be observed in the final human trial for this version of the drug. April 2nd, 2017. There will be no third trial today. We went to the on-site mortuary this morning to move the previous four test subjects to their crematorium, as their post-mortems proved inconclusive and found their bodies to be missing. A red alert was issued in the laboratory and all tests on the premises have been postponed until the bodies have been secured and disposed of. We do not know who took the bodies or where they went. The security guards stationed outside the mortuary said they didn't see anyone leave or enter and were relieved of their positions. The security cameras were checked to see who had taken the bodies, and, to our horror, we witnessed the corpses climb out from under the tables and start to scale the walls, into the vents. We sent a tactical team into the building and evacuated the scientists, leaving the subjects of the other tests in the building. After two hours, exactly seven of the 48 soldiers from the tactical team emerged from the building bloodied and weak. They told us how the corpses moved unnaturally and quickly and attacked by using their back feet to propel them forward, grabbing onto their throats with their teeth. Their horror and fear was concerning, and so they were relieved of their positions as well. We confirmed all the scientists were out and carried out an uncontrolled demolition of the laboratory. 
All documents referring to the tests that occurred in the lab were destroyed, as were our results of the tests. We are awaiting confirmation of the area's security. It is with great honor that I send you these transcripts to confirm that drug E73-2PAQ72 works as hopes. We know now the dose is required to transform adult men and women into the perfect weapon. Unfortunately, the drug is Coming not in. as effective on children, and its effectiveness on the elderly is unknown. But we can begin administering the drug to overflow prisoners in jails across every state in order to turn them into weapons for the war, finally solving the overcrowding problem in jails, while simultaneously converting inmates from the useless crooks to valuable government assets. This is certainly a historical moment, Mr. President. I am happy to have used my knowledge to contribute to such a worthy cause. Here's to many victorious wars to come. Respectively, Dr. J. Personnel number 093-789-050-048-0823. Clearance level 5. Pretty sure this won't be necessarily lighter. You're in violation of Midtown City Code 4432. Step out of your vehicle and surrender peacefully. Time's up. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to TNN Raw 2. I'm Tommy Sotomayor. This is some breaking news, and it was sent to me by a young lady named oh, Joe. Might not matter because I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> God deep so but where did you go? I gotta say. Fucked up. 